In this video, I wanted to do a very brief introduction to glycolysis, which is a pathway that we're going to be talking about more in future videos. Um, so what is glycolysis? Glycolysis literally comes from glyco, which you know implies a sugar, and lysis, which means to break up. So basically, glycolysis means splitting sugar. Which sugar in particular are we splitting? You probably already know this. The answer is glucose, which is a six-carbon molecule. So is this process process aerobic or anaerobic? Um, what we'll find out is that this process, well first of all, what is aerobic? Aerobic means requires oxygen. Anaerobic means does not require oxygen. So glycolysis is actually an anaerobic process because no oxygen is required for glycolysis to occur. Okay. Um, how many steps is glycolysis? There are actually 10 enzyme catalyzed steps. To glycolysis and the way I kind of think about it is there's there are two phases one being the uh, the investment phase the second being the payoff phase um, so glycolysis is first five reactions would be considered the investment phase in which we invest two ATP right so invest, normally when you invest anything right if you invest money in a particular company or idea or something you expect some sort of return right and you expect that and hope the return is larger so in the payoff phase, which is just the second five reactions of glycolysis, we actually make a total of four ATP. So if you think about that, four minus two, we actually net two ATP. So part of the reason of glycol part of the purpose of glycolysis is to, is to create ATP. But in, in just a moment, I'll mention a few other things that um, glycolysis is important for. Um, we have to be uh, keep in mind where in a cell does glycolysis occur? Glycolysis occurs in the cytosol, right, or the cytoplasm. So it does not occur in a, in a membrane-bound organelle. Other pathways, it's important to keep in mind where these pathways actually occur, and I'll get to that later, but bear in mind that glycolysis occurs in the cytosol. Now, um, one thing I want to mention before I go on about how this is, whether this is an oxidative or reductive pathway, we're taking this glucose and we're actually splitting it up. And I mentioned just a moment ago that glucose is a six carbon molecule. So in one, in one round of glycolysis, we take one glucose molecule, which is a six carbon molecule, and we turn it into two three carbon molecules called pyruvate. These are three carbon molecules. Okay. So knowing this, is this an oxidative or reductive pathway? Well, or is, and is it an anabolic or catabolic process? Well, if you watched the last video, you probably remember um, that anabolism is the building of, of macromolecules or building of molecules, and catabolic means the breaking down of molecules. Um, so in this case, we're taking glucose and we're making it into two pyruvate, two smaller components. So this will definitely be a catabolic pathway because we're breaking something down. Now, if you recall, I mentioned ARCO, right? And ARCO is just a short acronym to help you remember that an anabolic process is reductive and a catabolic process is oxidative. So this, this process is an oxidative pathway. So it's an oxidative catabolic process. Okay, And it's catabolic because we're taking glucose and we're breaking it down into a simpler component. Now, if we start off with one glucose molecule in glycolysis and that, go, that one glucose molecule goes all the way through, what do we net in terms of products? So what are the products of glycolysis given one glucose molecule? Well, one of our products, of course, is that we get two pyruvates. <coughs> Excuse me. We get two pyruvates, okay, and we net two ATP. In addition, we also create two NADHs. Okay, so what is the point of all these different things? The pyruvate has um, different possible fates. Um, let me note that here, the, um, depending on whether or not there's oxygen available, which I'll get to later. There are many different fates possible, not fats, <laughs> fates possible for pyruvate. It can go on to the TCA cycle or it can be fermented, which again we'll talk about later. 2-ATP, which of course can be used for energy, and 2-NADHs, which are supposed to go to the electron transport chain, the electron 
transport chain. Okay, to be reoxidized to generate um, energy. Again, we'll talk more about that later. But hopefully, that was a good little introduction as far as what glycolysis is all about. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.